wonder what the water looks like down here. Oh yeah, looks nice. I think I can drop in down here. Looks good. Terrible lighting. Let's try that again. Doing a little bit of waiting today. I am out on the beautiful, yet very small, Hocking River. The water is down, the water is clear, the water is cold. I have a really good feeling that I'm gonna be able to catch some fish before class. My main goal today is to find the smallmouth. Of course I wanna catch them, but I wanna find them too. I wanna to kinda of track as to which pools they're going to and how done some of these smaller scale pools are up near Nelsonville, Ohio. So in order to do that, you know, I could toss out a search bait like a drop shot or a whack room, but I wanted to try something out that I got in the mail recently that's gonna help me find these smallmouth. The little, th I'm sorry, I'm so distracted. Like this water looks so beautiful. I keep looking over here because I got a bunch of good looking eddies. Don't, don't even pay attention to the fact that I keep looking over there. It's just too gorgeous. But today I want to test out a product that I recently got in the mail actually last week. Yeah, a couple weeks ago, I don't know, I forget. It's similar to the Deeper, and I've done a review on the Deeper, and I've kind of broken down what that, what that is all about. But there is a new portable fish finder in town. It's called the Eye Bobber. Very suiting because it looks just like a bobber. It floats just like a bobber. What it doesn't do like a bobber is it helps you find your fish. It's similar to the Deeper in a sense that it connects to your phone, your tablet, your Android, your iPhone, and it tells you what's below the surface. So this is what the Eye Bobber looks like. Uh, upon opening it out of the package. But this little eye bobber will float. It'll float over a spot, over a piece of structure, and it'll tell you what's down there. It'll tell you if there's grass, uh, what the contour is, meaning is if it's hilly or flat, if there's any fish down there, because it's, it's a fish finder. And it's going to tell you basically what's under the water. It's gonna unveil, open the veil, veil being the water, and showing you what's below the surface. And I love it. I love technology these days, and I love how companies like eye bobber are producing things like this to help us anglers find fish in tricky areas. You know, it's not all about being one up on the fish, but it's all about kind of learning about what the fish are doing. And this isn't necessarily an opportunity just to find the fish so I can catch them, but it's also an opportunity for me to find the fish and see what they're doing, see if they're sitting in deep water, see if they're suspending, see if they're fighting the current, and things of that nature. So I'm super stoked to try this out, not only to help me kind of try to find the fish and catch them, but just to see what they're doing and see what they're relating to. So. I'm gonna get out in the water. I can't talk anymore because <laughs> this looks too good not to fish. So I'm kind of playing around with the app right now. This is the first time I've ever used it. And what it asks you to do is cast out your eye bobber, which I'm gonna do with my 7.6 Felix rod. And once it's in the water, I'm gonna press OK. It's gonna count down, and then I'm gonna reel it in. And I'm going real slow. You don't want to go too fast. I watched a video on this and that's kind of what they told you to do. And you're just kind of creeping it along. And the cool thing about having a casting reel is I can reel it in with one hand and hold, the f hold my phone in the other so I don't have to switch hands, which is kind of nice. Can't do that with a spinning rod, unfortunately. So once I've gotten close enough, I'll press OK when I'm done mapping. And it should tell me the depth down there. So that little hole right there was a whopping five feet. So that might be worth fishing, actually. No brush down there, a little bit of contour. Looks like a little, little drops off. Actually, I think that's just a gradual, uh, gradual uprise in the shallower water. It's pretty cool though. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I know that was off camera and that was super lame, but <laughs> I just literally walked right up on top of a smallmouth there, pitched a little Nico rig with a BPS sticko, and it just got slammed. This is a pretty nice smallmouth for this little river right here. I mean, just a gorgeous little thing. And I mean, to be honest, <laughs> I was gonna pass this up. I fish here a lot, and I never really fished this pool because I always thought it was shallow. But I threw that little eye bobber in there, and sure enough, <laughs> I smoked this nice little smallie. Look at the gut on this. I mean, this is a quality fish under any standards, especially for Ohio. But put that little eye bobber in there. I didn't believe it was five feet, Then, because I, I was a little suspicious, and I walked over there, and I'm like, 
up to here and I'm like about 6'1". So I was like, it maybe is five feet. Sure enough, I threw that in there. Got this nice little small amount. That's so cool. That's so, so cool. I didn't mark the fish, but I marked the depth and I marked the kind of dip down where it goes into five feet. And five feet's ideal for this river. So I thought, why not? I'll just go over there and get a cast. That's why I didn't even bring the camera because I didn't expect much. Beautiful smallmouth though. There he goes. Nice river smallmouth. small rivers and produce multiple fish. You know, granted, these aren't Lake Erie size, but I mean, like I said, in any standards, these are still really quality fish. Look at that. And uh, to be honest, I can thank that little, that little eye bobber device to kind of boost my confidence and tell me that, yeah, there is some depth there that could possibly hold some fish. Look at him. He wanted that little Nico rig so bad. Nice river smallie. Back in the water she goes. Thanks, buddy. So for those of you guys who have been watching my recent videos where I'm tackling smallmouth in these small creeks and river systems like this, the main rig that just seems to be dominating lately throughout early summer to early fall is this little Nico rig. And it's basically a wacky worm with a octopus hook and a four inch sticko by BPS. And I'm taking a little nail right there and I'm putting it at the end of the worm so that it counterbalances the buoyancy at the other end. And this bot, this part stays on the bottom, and the tail, the pointed part, stays up top. And it's a really effective rig for not only clear water fish, but for these little creek smallmouth. Perfect presentation for this bite. So I'm gonna get back in there. Enough talking. Notice Wally. Nothing too big, but creek smallies are always fun. Dips down a little bit there. Gets to about five feet, looks like. Those are probably suckers, and that's probably some brush. That actually might be some smallmouth. I, I keep getting bit down there, but I can't seem to connect. Pretty accurate reading, you know, for an inexpensive device like this. I don't know if it's spot on, but for the most part, it seems to be reading pretty well. This may not be a very good spot. It looks like a good spot. Not a very good spot, apparently. I don't know if current, maybe? I don't know. It's gotta be something under there. Even if it isn't fast moving. Oh, there's one. Good, good spot, good spot. Really nice spotted bass. Really nice spotted bass. He's got it. Nice spot, really nice spotted bass. Oh, this is a chunk. Oh, look how fat that, I hope you guys saw that on camera. I was just like barely twitching out of there and I thought for sure there's gotta be something and I saw a flash. And sure enough, this nice spot came out of nowhere. Oh my God, I'm gonna set the camera up. This is so dope. Look at that spot. <laughs> it's so cool. He ate that. I mean, he really ate that. I saw a little flash from up under that uh, lay down and sure enough, this, guy, this dude came up. It took him a while to hit, but he finally nailed it. Fishing with a metanium. I've caught everything but a largemouth with this reel so far. 
Just an awesome spotted bass. Look how fat he is. Oh, shoot, almost went in the water on that one. Gorgeous, hawking, hills, spotted bass. Wow. There's not too many of this size in here. There he goes. <laughs> Dude, that thing's gotta be at least two pounds. It was so fat. Okay, so, so far, three smallmouth, one spotted bass, two of the smallmouth. Really wouldn't have happened unless I threw that eye bobber there, so. Technically, I probably would have had about a two fish day thus far if it weren't for that eye bobber. Whoa, almost ate. Okay, so do I like the eye bobber? Definitely. It's a very cool little device that is perfect for beginner anglers and anglers who know what they're doing. A few things that I want to point out that I especially like about the eye bobber and kind of why it sets itself apart from the rest of the portable fish finding device game, so to speak, is its price point. I like how inexpensive it is and that's really key too, especially when it comes to the beginner angler market. For anglers who don't really know what they're doing, to be honest, you know, as an angler, I really wish there were devices like this when I was growing up that helped me fish because there's always that gap as to whether you know you're doing something right or if you don't know what you're doing right. You know, you don't know if you're fishing in the right area, if there's fish in the area that you're fishing in the first place. And I think devices like this little eye bobber here help bridge that gap and help kind of build the confidence up and let you know there are in fact fish are where you're fishing and helps younger anglers and beginner anglers not get discouraged. And it uh, helps you learn a lot about your local lakes. There's times where I use little devices like this and find a lot about lakes I've been fishing for years. I've learned new things. Pieces of structure that I didn't know were there, depths, drops off, drop offs, and things of that nature. So very cool. I like how inexpensive it is. It allows for beginner anglers to get into the realm of using these very cool futuristic devices. The other thing I like about it too is it's super light, and that may seem kind of like a stupid thing, but it really is important because when you're using one of these things, some of them are pretty heavy. Like I believe the deeper is around two ounces, which is pretty heavy. You know, this is a lot lighter than that, and you can cast this on like a 7.6 rod. I'm casting it today on 16 pound test with a 7.6 medium heavy on a little Sitka casting rule. I mean, it handles perfectly fine, and you don't have to like launch it out there like it's a big net lure swim bait. It's just like a, you know, little Huddleston Deluxe for the most part, but uh, this will actually tell you where the fish are at. Other than that, I'm trying to think of a few things that I really liked about it. Um, oh, I really like the mapping feature. I think that's pretty cool as to how you can kind of record and go back and check to see if you miss something or, 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 or just kind of scan a whole length of water. Just kind of, like I said earlier, unveiling the surface of the water and seeing what's down there. I always love that aspect and I'm a huge tech geek when it comes to uh, fishing items like this. I love the cross in between technology and bass fishing. This is something that is for all anglers too and that's what I really like. They kind of created this for beginner anglers and all anglers. Carp fishermen, cat fishermen, people who fish for panfish, crappie bluegill, including bass. You know, there's a little thing right here is two actually line ties right there and one of which is where you can tie another line to and this can actually act as a bobber and a fish alarm and where you get a bite your phone will start to beep or ring and that'll let you know when you've got a fish which I, think, which I think is really cool it won't come into play for me of course as a bass angler but for carp angler carp anglers and uh, catfish anglers I can see this being a huge little product for the most part I like it you know it doesn't like blow me out of the water but it's a very cool product and if you're a beginner angler and wanted to get into the sport and just aren't confident in yourself and where you're fishing this is like a huge tool to get I mean it's not that expensive you think about it it costs as much as that reel that you maybe wanted or something like that save up for it if it's something that you really want then get it if it's something that you don't you know you don't feel like you need then try for something else but I honestly think that you should at least give it a try and nowadays in fishing, you're going to spend money on just about anything you get. So $100, I know it sounds ridiculous what I'm about to say, but $100 really isn't that much in today's fishing industry. And for those of you guys who know what I'm talking about, will agree. Because think about it, I mean, an inexpensive reel to me is $100. Honest to God, it really is as far as bass fishing goes. Of course, it varies for species and what you're targeting, but a little device like this, in my opinion, is well worth the money. And uh, I'm excited to use it for the rest of the fall. I'm not going to be using the big lakes and while I'm on the boat, but little creeks like this and little ponds, it's going to come into play so much. So I'm excited to, to continue, continue to try this. Hi, Bobber.
literally cannot believe this. I leave for like 10 seconds and these guys take my freaking spot. Are you serious? You guys are poaching. You guys saw that I was fishing here. You guys are poaching. What are you doing? It's outrageous. I was here first, man. I swear, I'm not gonna start anything. I mean, I'm definitely outnumbered, but these guys are, these guys are inconsiderate. That's just rude. 